Yep, that's right. This is the Anesis Tour 900 from Decathlon. Now these retail at £24.99 and the claims are that it gives you maximum ball flight distance. It's a urethane cover, so it's designed to give you maximum spin around the green. So today I've come out onto our academy course and I'm going to put this ball to the test. I'm going to hit it from 50 yards, I'm going to hit full seven irons and then we're going to go back into the studio because I don't want to lose them and we're going to hit driver and we're going to see how this compares to a Pro V1. I've got the brand new Pro V1 with me, I've got three brand new Anesis Tour 900s, I've got GC Quad so all that's left to do is to hit some shots and see how this ball actually feels and compares to the leader of the pack. So first thing I'm going to do is get some baselines. I'm going to hit the two Pro V1s that I've got. I've got a 50 yard pitch shot. I expect to see around 5,000 ish spin from this and see what kind of launch angle and spin I get. And then we'll put the Anesis up against it. So just a 50 yard pitch shot with the Pro V1. Okay. So Pro V1, launch angle 35 degrees, spinning at 4,325, where I'd li probably like to see it, carrying 56 yards. Right, let's see how the Anesis does. So that's kind of a baseline, what I'd be looking for, in and around as close to 5,000 as possible. Okay, that's interesting. So that first one carried two yards further and actually span at 6,600, but it did feel harder. It clicked off the club face, definitely, compared to the Pro V1. Yeah, there's a definite click there. Like, I don't like it click. That carried 50 yards and span at 3-4. Alright, let's hit one more. That's a better shot. So, that carried 61 yards and then and span at 57.50. So actually, I had two shots there, and the second one I probably didn't hit very well, but the first two I definitely hit decent. The first one span at 6,000, the second one span at 5,000, so actually span more than the Pro V1s. So around the green, I'm getting exactly what it said I would get, which is maximum spin. They are great numbers from a 50-yard pitch shot, and definitely a ball that I could feel myself going into for the spin numbers. Only downside is I didn't like the feel off the club face. Okay, so now I've come back another 50 yards. I'm now 100 yards away. I want to see what a full wedge shot looks and sounds and feels like, but also what numbers it's producing. So far, pretty impressed from a 50 yard pitch shot, but how does it perform for a full wedge shot? So we've got about 100 yards left to this green. I'm just going to hit full wedge shots and see how they perform. That's a better shot. Right, so that carried 92 yards and span at seven and a half thousand, which is not too bad, uh, quite acceptable from this sort of distance. Right, Anesis time. All right, that one didn't register, so we'll try that one again. So it carried 88, span 9, 7,900, really, really impressive. It's performing as well as the Pro V1. I just don't like the feel of it. It feels heavier, feels clickier, doesn't feel as soft to me as the Pro V1. Okay, it carried 93 yards that time, span at seven and a half thousand. So it's up there. It's performing just as well as the Pro V1 with these full wedge shots and the 50 yard wedge shots. There's not a lot to separate it, but I will say that the Pro V1 feels so much better off the face so much softer, the, the Anesis, it feels heavy, it feels clicky, it just, it's weird, it's like, it kind of feels a little bit like a brick. Okay, I've come back to the tee and we're going to hit some full seven iron shots. Now, I'm not going to hit it off a tee, I'm going to hit it off the deck. Now, we're going to use a Pro V1 to start with. Numbers I would expect to see, 170 to 175 carry, six, five and a half to 6,000 revs of spin. That would be what I'd love to see with a, six iron, with a seven iron. So, we're going to start with Pro V1 first. Carried 168, span at 5,405. So, like I said, around about 170 to 175, five and a half to 6,000 spin. Exactly what I'd be wanting to see with my 7-iron. Right, so one more. 
a little bit heavy with that. Carried 165 span at 54. So there are thereabouts without a shadow of a doubt. What I'd expect to see from Pro V1. Right then. Let's see how the Anesis gets on. Carry 159 span at 7600 so actually really spinny uh, big drop in distance there of about 10 yards i felt like i struck it quite well ball speed was pretty much 117 the same as the pro v1 but span at 76 has completely just knocked the distance out it's like 2000 revs more than the pro v1 definitely gives you maximum spin Carry 151, span 6,965. So what I'm seeing is it's actually a pretty spinny golf ball. All right, let's hit one more with this and then we'll go back in and hit driver. So that one came off the face pretty well. Carry 170, spin at 7.3. So from them three shots, it's pretty clear that it's a lot spinnier than the Pro V1. Right, come indoors, I'm going to hit some driver, because I've only got three balls, and the chances are I'd probably lose them if I tested this outside. So I'm going to do Pro V1 first, see what kind of baseline numbers I get. Probably expect 270 carry, two and a half spin, that sort of thing, when it comes to Pro V1. But let's, uh, let's see how we're swinging today, give it a test, and then we'll get the anesis on and see what's happening with that. Okay, straight off the bat, ball speed 157, carry 271, spin 2575 with a launch angle of 13.4. Exactly what I want Pro V1 to be doing. All right, let's put the anesis on. I don't need to hit any more Pro V1. First shot did exactly what I wanted it to do and what I expect it to do. So, see what anesis does. But if outside has anything to do, I think it's going to be a bit too spinny. So similar strike, ball speed 155, so two mile an hour down, but carry 256, 14 yards down, spin up at 3,200, too spinny, but let's have another try. All right, so the first two shots were very similar, similar strike location, pretty central, just above the center line, similar speeds, but it was that spin that's just killed that yardage, only going 256 as opposed to 271 that the Pro V1 did. So smack bang in the centre location, carry 229, ball speed 154, that one span up at 5035. The fact I'm now having to chase it as opposed to the Pro V1 literally happened first ball, tells me that this ball is not the one for me. Let's give it one more go. Okay. So a little bit higher in the face than the Pro V1, but it's pretty, still pretty central. Ball speed 156, so similar to the Pro V1. That time the spin came down at 2289, carried 278. So actually, it'll perform. It's all strike dependent. It's completely strike dependent um, uh, with driver, as that's just shown. The first three were a little bit spinny, but actually catch one right, just a little bit higher than centre, it comes out with low spin and carries 278, which is superb. So with driver, with pretty similar strikes, maybe just a little bit higher in the face with the Anesis over the Pro V1, spin comes down, it carries, a little, it carries a little bit further. So actually, it is performing just as well as the Pro V1. Um, it's nigh on impossible to get exactly the same strike location and be able to put it head to head like that. But what I will say is with similar strikes that I felt and saw, the Anesis picked up the spin over 3,000 to what the Pro V1 did at two and a half. But when I caught the Anesis a little bit higher in the face, the spin dropped off, the distance went up, and it was actually just a perfect drive. So in conclusion, what do I think of the Anesis Tour 900? Around the green, it performs fantastic. It spins really well. It spins up there and above a Pro V1. So around the green, I'm definitely going to feel like it's a spinny ball and I've got lots of greenside control. So what they say on their box for that side of it, tick. 
maximum distance. Now, this is a little bit of a tricky one. With driver, definitely proved that it is up there with the Pro V1 when it comes to distance, and it is completely strike dependent. But I found when I did the seven iron test, it was spinning in the high 7,000s, and for me, that's too much. And for anybody, it's too much because that's a balloony ball flight into wind that's just going to balloon up in the air. I'd already lost a bit of yardage from what I would expect my 7 iron to go anyway. And with that much spin, it's just going to rise up in the air and it's going to go absolutely nowhere. So for, for me, the 7 iron area is where this ball was let down a little bit today, as opposed to the Pro V1. But greenside spin was fantastic. Um, get the strike right, I feel, with the driver. And the spin on this is fantastic. But with a similar... Definitely a similar strike location between the Pro V1 and this. It definitely span a little bit more than the Pro V1. It took me three or four hits to get this into the area where it performed better than the Pro V1. With the Pro V1, it was a one hit Van Damme done. So, I don't know. Would I change into this ball from what I play, which is a Swix and Z Star XV? No, no, I wouldn't, no. Is it a good ball for £24.99? Absolutely. It is definitely a good ball for £24.99. You'll get great green side spin. I did feel like it was a bit heavy. Just felt heavy and clicky on those short pitch shots opposed to the softer, like, feeling Pro V1. This was just a bit like, I felt like I'd hit a stone or something. It, was that, it felt that hard. But actually, with full 7-iron hits, it feels great. With driver, it feels fine. It's just those little touchy, feely shots around the green. Definitely felt a little bit heavier for me. Great ball, not for me, and certainly not a replacement for the Pro V1 in my opinion. Right, I hope you've enjoyed that ball review. I know some of you are going to be playing this ball and going to absolutely love it and completely disagree with what I say, but I can only say what I see, say what I find on my data and give you my honest opinion. But if you have enjoyed this video, please do give this video a like down below. If you are new to the channel or aren't yet subscribed, please do click that subscribe button down below as well. We are growing this channel very nicely and it'd be great to hit 10,000 by the end of the year. I've got a few other balls that I'm going to start testing as well. I've got the Kirkland in and I'm going to start testing other balls as they come in. But for the time being, I'm going to leave this here um, and I'll see you all on the next video.